One of the most common questions I get whenever we do a video about any sort of wood finish is, is it food safe? I'm not just talking about finishes for cutting boards and bowls and wooden spoons. People are worried about the finish on their tabletops and their wood countertops. Just today, someone told me that the label on his bottle of natural tongue oil said it was harmful if swallowed, so he was afraid to put it on a cutting board. Part of the problem is the fact that some manufacturers use marketing terms like food safe on finishes to infer that their competitors without such labels are selling you something poisonous. It's like buying hormone-free chicken. At least in the US, you cannot inject hormones into commercially produced chicken. So the label's redundant and is in fact just a sales ploy designed to mislead you. We could talk all day about these types of sales tactics throughout a wide range of consumer products, but let's stick to wood finishes. I'm gonna drop a truth bomb on you, so brace yourself. All the wood finishes you find on the hardware store shelf, which dry to a hard film, are food safe. Natural oils, shellac, even polyurethane. Once these finishes fully cure, they are food safe. In the old days, a lot of finishes were considered bad news because they contained lead as a metallic dryer. How much of that lead you could actually get into your body from a cutting board is debatable, but it doesn't matter anymore because lead was banned from wood finishes nearly half a century ago. While other metallic dryers are still used in some finishes, such as boiled linseed oil, they're in such trace amounts that you would have to consume the finish right from the bottle to get any significant exposure to them. Even the solvents and the bonding agents that are in these finishes evaporate away or they bond with oxygen molecules and they harden as the finish cures. Sure, if you drink right from the can of polyurethane, you better do it on the way to the hospital. But once it cures on the wood, it's pretty much just plastic. We use plastic for eating utensils and containers all the time. Can plastics harm you? Sure, if you eat a set of Tupperware bowls, but through regular use, be it on a cutting board or a wooden salad bowl or a ladle, virtually none of that finish is going to come off into your food. Certainly no more than came off the Rubbermaid cutting board that your mom used while you were growing up, and you turned out fine, right? The key is to let the finish cure so all those harmful solvents are gone and the finish itself has fully hardened. Polyurethane takes about a month to cure. Other finishes may take less time. As a general rule, if you can touch it, your nose to it and smell the finish at all, it's not cured yet. Of course, that doesn't mean polyurethane is the best finish for your cutting boards and other food-related wood projects. There are other options, each with their own sets of pros and cons. In fact, let's take a minute to go through the common finishes used on food-related wood products so you can choose what's best for you. Mineral oil is safe to consume right out of the bottle if you don't mind violent diarrhea. In fact, it's sold in drugstores as a laxative. But once it soaks into the wood, it's not going to come off your food and ruin your dinner party. I like mineral oil for cutting boards that may be cleaned with light rinsing, but not for bowls and things that may be submerged in water because it's not very water resistant. Boiled linseed oil contains chemical and even metallic dryers that can be harmful, so don't drink it. But after about a month, it will fully cure and it'll be safe on things like cutting boards. It's not a great choice though, because it can darken and even become rancid over time, just like vegetable oils can. Walnut oil comes from walnuts. People put it on their salads to eat, so naturally it's safe to spread on a salad bowl or other wood product. There is some debate about its effect on those with severe nut allergies, so keep that in mind. I've never heard of a documented case of an allergic reaction from tongue oil, which comes from nuts as well, but I'm neither a doctor nor a nut, so decide for yourself. Keep in mind that a lot of tongue oil and Danish oil products contain all sorts of other things besides a few drops of actual oil. That doesn't mean that these blends are dangerous as fully cured food safe finishes, but it may affect how they must be maintained over time. Shellac comes from bug droppings. If that doesn't gross you out, you might use it on your cutting boards and such. My issue with shellac is it isn't very water resistant and it dissolves in alcohol even after it's fully cured. Since I always have a lot of booze around my kitchen, I don't use shellac on my counters or tabletops, much less my cutting boards and bowls. 
polyurethane, as we already discussed, is basically plastic and solvent. Once the solvent evaporates and everything hardens, which takes about a month, it's safe for food-related items. It's also very durable and resistant to water, grease, you name it. But it's not as easy to maintain as other finishes that can easily be recoated without a lot of sanding. There are also several wax-based finishes that are marketed specifically for food-related wood products. These often contain beeswax or even carnauba wax mixed with natural oils. They are as safe as the oils that are in it, as we just mentioned, and they may add some more water resistance than the oils alone. Like natural finishes, though, you have to reapply them fairly regularly. Paste waxes, like Johnson's and other brands, contain solvents such as mineral spirits that evaporate over time. I'd have no problem putting paste wax on a countertop that would come into contact with food, but there are better, more durable finishes for things like bowls and cutting boards. There are, of course, a wide range of other finishes I didn't mention, such as lacquers and other varnishes. While I maintain as a general rule that any finish that cures to a hard film is food safe, I can't speak to every single finish out there. So I recommend checking with the manufacturer if you aren't sure. I hope this clears things up. See you next time. It's just a couple of cuts. Your ears will be fine, right? They will be if you have your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in because you'd already have your ANSI certified hearing protection on because you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts and you're supporting a small family business at the same time. Please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them you support what we do as well. Wait, don't go yet. If you're new here, please subscribe and remember to ring the bell. I would really appreciate that. Give us a thumbs up or better yet, leave us a comment. I always read them. And be sure to check out the latest issue of Stumpy Nubs Woodworking Journal. It's always packed with tips, tricks, and tutorials designed to make you a better woodworker.